bit. I really do think he, he could take it all. And, I mean, kind of case in point, going up against Spargo, and this is a matchup that I feel like Bayonetta does fairly well in, and I really like Nemo's odds if he can keep it clean. That's always the problem there. Spargo gives you so few opportunities to make mistakes. If you bleed even a little, this shark will hunt you down and make sure that he has a quick meal. Yeah, and this kid is hungry. He's a, he's a growing kid, all right? Exactly. Growing pains right there. Got to go ahead and have a couple extra large dinners. And at this spot here in D.C., we are trying to go ahead and just about wrap this up. Winner's semis, y'all. So winner of this advance the winner's finals. We are two matches away from Grands. It's been a hell of a day for Smash, and it's all winding down to this. And the record between these two heavily favors Spargo, okay? Yeah. Uh, Career-wise, 4-0, all in Spargo's favor. That is a little bit brutal here, and I, I can kind of see why we're already seeing just the damage output of Cloud far outpacing Bayonetta, and once you go ahead and have to expand that air dodge, dodge one back air, the frame trap comes in, the up smash, you cannot afford to tap that shield improperly, gotta go ahead and show some respect in this matchup. One of the things that separates Spargo from a lot of other Clouds is that he knows what option to use on shield every single time, there's no hesitation. A lot yeah. of times people just kind of hesitate for just a quick second. And when you do that, you lose out on so many opportunities. Cloud is a character, as strong as he is, he needs to get everything that's on the table. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, you've seen so many Clouds do an up out of shield when they could have done the up smash to get the kill. It feels like the frame data isn't really a factor for Spargo. He just knows exactly when he can get those stocks. Yeah, it's all instinct for this kid, honestly. All right, but right now, Lima able to make it back. Just a little bit. I almost thought he would reverse that witch twist just to kind of put Spargo in an awful position. But even that he didn't do that, you know, he's, I think he can get the stock fairly quickly, but Limit, look at that, it's just a pixel away. It's ever present, and Spargo not even opting to charge it, because he knows next hit it could, you know, get it, he could reverse the situation, get an advantage, and now have Lima on the ledge with Limit. But Lima fearlessly grabbing him and just throwing him off stage, and now Spargo back without Limit, but still whole stock up. I'm sure he's not too torn up about it. I really dig that aggressive up B2 from Spargo. Just recognizing that the offstage game plan is one that Spargo needs to be airtight on because Cloud's Hodge is not the best offstage and Lima's Bayo known for ledge guarding, but finally does manage to land that back air as well. So stock one off for Cloud, but doesn't need too much range to get this kill. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I feel like this is the perfect percent for Bayonetta to get a solid combo because oh, yeah. low percents against faster followers, it, they still work, but they're a little wonky, easier to SCI out of. But this percent, with this amount of rage, this is just perfect uh, for Lima. You see one witch twist, and Spargo look at that, not pressing forward, not pressing this issue at all, knows that Lima's looking for it. The patience. I mean, Lima's kind of known for being one of those players to wear you down, to go ahead and tilt their opponent and force them in, but instead it is Spargo now that is just running away back here and saying, we both know what the tail of this match is going to be. You have to come to me. I got the lead, and it is your turn to guess. I have a big opportunity. Really good reaction on that air dodge. Yo, Lima with the freestyle combos, with the SDI off the top. Still, Spargo on the defense. And actually, look at this. Wait a minute. Gets that second wish twist. The Fairs could do it. No, excellent DI from Spargo, but the damage was done. Over 100 off that string, and the bats with men are starting to come out a lot more often as well. Lima, defense firing on all pistons. We actually haven't seen too many of those side Bs. Usually that's such a powerful anti-air tool, but Lima's really playing around it quite well. Spargo is lacking a few of those options to rack up damage particularly easily without, say, uh, the back air wall, the forward air wall. Instead, we're seeing a little bit more neutral here, a lot more back airs, but speak of the devil, Lima managing to get that kill confirm at the perfect percentage. I swear no other Bayo does it better than Lima in those clutch situations. Because he reads the jumps, and that's True. the thing that's really difficult. I mean, like, Cloud's a taller character, so the up tilt works more consistently against him but when you just kind of read the um, movement of your opponent, that's when a lot of doors open for you. This is starting to get a little bit dicey right here, though. Lima at 100% stuck in the corner. The edge trap begins as Spargo hopping around saying, I dare you to challenge my back air. Instead, the beautiful Tomahawk right there definitely caught Lima frozen in shield, shipping away at that shield again. And even if you jump away, if you get away from one ledge pressure, all right, just reset the situation. We do this one more time. And we got Limit in the back pocket to boot. That situation was so bad for Lima because you hold on to ledge, you get blade beam. If you get up from ledge, your shield was still recovering there. So if you cross slash, it's very liable that you could die. Granted, Bayonetta could bat within out of that. Most characters don't have that option. But it's just another thing in the mental stack. And while Lima was catching his breath, Spargo's trying to take it. Certainly. In those positions, I feel like Spargo knows how to go for the jugular. Yes. Like, the pressure never stops. You never get that moment to compose yourself and to consider what happens. This is when you get the opportunity to consider. After you've taken that L, you can get your one or two deep breaths, but in 
Instead, when the matches are in, you have no opportunities. You have to have foot to the floor, pedal to the metal instantaneously. Yeah, you're kind of forced to play Spargo Space. All right. So there we go. A little bit of costume switch going with the Advent Children fit. No, I dig it. Yeah, I always like that one a bit more, honestly. Like, his classic one is iconic, but the Advent Children was a good adaptation of it. All right, how do you actually land on Cloud, though? That sliding up tilt is devastating. Yeah. Shoot, if I knew, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> like, I would be up there. <laughs> Very true, That's yeah. the million-dollar question. This is the puzzle we're all, we're all trying to solve, and so far, the answer is only. Yeah. yeah. Um, ledge? Hope he doesn't, like, decide to chase you? Oh. Very nearly killing right there, and the limit is gone as well, but the incorrect hitbox in that opportunity. But again, we're getting that down here. Was that a foot tool as well, under that? I didn't see it, but I believe you. I was still processing just like how Witch was functionally did not work, and that's the thing that saved Spargo's life. Hey, multi it's right? Yeah. Occasionally, the game just like, nah, you got this dog. Yep. I'll give it up, yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> Both players air dodging backstage, but Spargo did not have the double jump and wasn't able to fire off that limit for sure. Needed quite a bit extra charge. Up tilt combo opportunity, but good air dodge right down to the platform Spargo, and that's when you get the reversal. Now all of a sudden Lima above Spargo, yet again struggling to land, while Spargo just needs the one read to take this stock, barely misses that back air, and we are chopping away at that shield. Man, back air does so much shield damage over time. The fact that you get so many of them means that, like, it just changes your the landscape of your opponent's defensive options throughout the set. Definitely one of those tools where if you don't understand what your response is to, like, a perfectly spaced back air with your character, then how do you actually fight this character? Yeah. You need to know this kind of matchup knowledge. It's, it's these small situations where micro spacing can make a macro level of difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant up there, out of shield there, and look at that Waveland just to chase up there all the way, and now Spargo on the board, but Lima still saw lead, and yeah, had to give her that limit pretty quick because I feel like limit in that situation actually would have worked against him. Yeah, it makes you more susceptible to combos because it increases your gravity, basically effectively increasing your fall speed and making you more susceptible to those multi-hits. Yeah, so getting rid of that, trying to cash out. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Trying to go ahead and get an anti-air with that random up air. I dig it. Tossing Lima off stage, though, trying to get the spike. Neither one of those down airs connecting. So we're back to cuts here. No forward air connection. And then the spot dodge to dodge the back air. And intercepting that uh, up B attempt there with the neutral air, though. All right, but Lima picks up that conversion. Up till forward air. One, two, three. Just taking damage where you can get it. But the glowing blue starts to happen. Yeah, Lima had to get him out of there because at 50% with that much rage, I mean, Bayonetta could have gotten cross slash at the ledge if Sparkle played the cards right. And speaking of playing the cards right, I saw the forward air. I saw him trying to rev up those engines. Oh, yeah. This is... People forget that Cloud is a terrorist. And Spargo occasionally kind of plays him with a little bit of a reckless abandon here, trying to claim these stocks early and often. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. He's a hero, but yeah, he's definitely an eco-terrorist. And he was right all along. I'm just saying. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> I didn't play the original Final Fantasy VII. I don't play the remake. Gotcha. I'm a fraud. <laughs> all right. But... Forcing a low recovery here. Lima more than comfortable to hang out out there, knowing the dash tag wouldn't kill and just burning more time off that limit. Blade Beam was just there just to try and get something, but nothing doing. And again, rinse repeat, another dash tag, another good DI situation for Lima, and good bats. Okay, lots of rage, but Spargo's SDI and the defense has been out of this world. Yeah, this know? is kind of nuts. Like, I, I don't see characters fall out of up this early this often. Yeah. Here, not going to connect again, and this time we get the parry and the grab. Lima has really tightened up defense here on game two. Like, I am stunned by how just different these two games have gone. The tempo has reversed entirely, and it really feels as though Lima needed a little bit of time to get their feet set, and then the backer to claim it with a JV2. What a difference, J Dog, from game one. I'm telling you, Lima's one of those players who will just randomly show up and be the best player in the world, and then occasionally bust her out. But tonight, Tonight, I don't know. I feel like we're seeing the true Lima, the Evo champion Lima coming through. I mean, there is a reason so few folks have been able to step up to that podium underneath the bright lights of be it Evo or be it Coinbox. Lima does not crack. Lima shines. Yeah, that's for sure. Spargo looking like the defender this time around. Shocking stuff. But now we get uh, his counter pick going off to Kalos. And I'm trying to think, because Spargo's um, offense is so varied and layered. I didn't get a chance to point this out, but the biggest thing that impresses me is how he changed up the timing of his fastballs, just completely changed on whether or not you'll parry, where the sh uh, attack will hit on your shield, or just how safe it is or how not safe it is. It kind of 
has layers to it, but Nima's just been correct. Either through parrying or through buffering spot dodge to get that. It's an option that most other characters don't have. Mithra could be argued, but wait. Okay, it's it's so far away, and that hitbox doesn't really matter. Exactly. Anytime you can react to those projectiles, it just becomes okay. If you, you're trying to just blow this limit away, just trying to toss it out to try to get a little bit of damage, okay, now that becomes my advantage state. Thank yeah. you very much. Our advantage combo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the people's combo. Yeah. Mutually, that actually might, that's a double jump expanded, but look at the limit charge. Great presence of mind from Spargo, recognizing that we can expand that double jump, immediately get the limit. Carrying Cloud across the stage, though, and what? into the blast zone, but the wrong hitbox. All that combo, and you just gave up stage control. Let's do it again. Why did he reverse it? Why did he reverse it? I, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I'm... I'm so confused. Why the, did he reverse The that? inner mind of a top player is an enigma, j Dog. It's yeah. not one that I can crack. <laughs> True. <laughs> He's just different. Occasionally, we just get a little bit lost in the sauce. Perhaps that was what it was. Yeah. You know, compasses don't work down there. <laughs> True. Jeez. But that back air sure as heck does. Going right over that blade beam and finding that in there. Lima using every movement option he can just to make sure that he can maintain the pressure on Sparta. Now trying to go ahead and lift on him instead. We Ooh. get the forwarder trying for the double dip too. Spargo very aggressive offstage, which is interesting because even if you get that spike, I don't think Bayo is going to be too flummoxed by it. Yeah, she might be able to still make it back. I mean, if she has her double jump, she can make it back from almost anywhere. All right, trying to land with the up air again, calling out some kind of an anti-air option, but Lima patient as always. And it feels like we talked about that game one where everybody, we were talking about Spargo actually watching what Lima's doing, but here it does feel as though Lima is just kind of being a little bit more reactive, and that's really working out particularly well, except in these specific situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone wants to be a reactive player in swing second until your opponent is Mike Tyson, you know? Yeah. Like, you want to be a counter puncher until, like, they just hit you once in the chin and knock you it's out. Like, damn, them hands are something I don't want to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> hands are like sludge hammers, man. Oh, okay, I half thought he was just going to run out there and forward air. I love Lima so much for those things. The Randy forward smash is like, listen, I need you to go ahead and try to approach me for once. Oh, but carried him all the way across the stage. was like, okay, I whiffed that one, but that was just a preview. Here's the main event. <laughs> forward smash to the face and Lima right back in it with a perfect percent. You saw the trailer here, but I got to get the motion picture for you. Yeah. Really good grab right there from Spargo. Those work so well as like a gambit near the end of games and sets because everyone just wants to shield and feel safe. I mean, yes, I'd like to feel something other than terror in this spot right here. And that's yeah. kind of in these particular situations when you're kind of starting to swing a little bit wild. I like Spargo isn't getting away with these up smashes. Instead, it's Lima that's actually getting kind of like the wild hits to connect. He only was able to not die there because he held the afterburner kick and got the guns. And that just had just enough hitbox or, or enough hit stun to throw Spargo off his game. That's the only reason Lima's still alive, and that might be why he can take this game here in just one hit. He has that the perfect rage, and he has to be aware of his shield, so he parries, and what was that option? That I, was so smart if it worked. Yeah, that was definitely one of those where we were looking for the aggressive upbeat back to stage, and again, though, the guns off of the special once more. Spargo has to react to that option. It's so hard to, because I don't know if Cloud has an option outside of up B that's fast enough to get in between the hits safely. But there we go. When you are out of options, back to the wall, just go back to old, reliable, basic back air. It's never let him down. Definitely been Cloud's most oppressive tool since the character was introduced into Smash. Doesn't matter what you do to recreate his moveset. As long as the frame date is good, that back air, pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. Pretty nice. It's just, I mean, I know it's only the second iteration of Cloud, but if we have another Smash after this, I feel like Cloud might go into the kind of history books as characters who will just always be good in Smash. Like your Pikachus, your Fox. Diddy Kong. Diddy Kong, yeah. Those characters will never actually be bad in Smash as long as the engine works similar to how it has been in the last 20 years. Yo, Cloud in the melee engine, though? He'd now be I busted. gotta think about that. That'd be, yeah, exactly. Be it's like you think Marth's good, though. Wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> If you gave Falco a sword, <laughs> like, I feel like it's similar to what would be happening. Look at that shield pressure on that platform, absolutely terrifying. But Lima, standing strong, managed to land a combo as well. ABK into up to a second ABK, and we're going with the forward air. Limit does mean that we have to extend this combo, but look at the aggression swinging with that forward air. That was brave, J-Dog. That would have killed. That's the thing that had me reeling back my chair. It was like, you just hail married that. Just try to go for that forward air off the back foot. 
Okay. Yep, that Witch Whisper is going to be a trouble. Yep, and you hold that up air. I don't think you can make it back. What are we doing down here? Uh, we are waiting on okay, that okay. double jump. Yeah, very, very smart. Spargo held on to that as long as humanly possible. So Lima recognized that, hey, we have to go ahead and react super late and continue to rinse and repeat. Yeah, I'll give it up. I thought Spargo burned that double jump like, you know, 10 seconds before. So Lima... Brilliant presence of mind, showing why he's one of the best in business. Real talk, Cloud goes up a whole tier when he comes down from the Angel platform because then back air in stale no more. When back True. air kills at 120, that character is busted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only reason like we don't see back air kill earlier is because it's the best neutral tool. One of the best neutral tools in the game. Real talk, they changed the way that this game works so that moves on shield stale, yes. and that was the big one. It's like typically like smash forward, Cloud knocks away at your shield, he doesn't care about it. But now the fact that that'll actually stale it out means that that move is really just not a kill option unless the character's fresh. Mm -hmm. All right, but now Spargo just going for the Blade Beam a little bit earlier, so he has to kind of get that limit back up, hopefully in a way that Lima... Okay, never mind, never mind. Lima just not even having any of that shenanigans right there. Spargo just has to hold those guns. Second Amendment rights right there. You may not like it, but it's enshrined, and Lima's <laughs> certainly out here showing us that, uh, you know what, maybe there was a reason for that? Maybe? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Bayo certainly thinks so. Yeah. I mean, heck, she's got four of them, so. <laughs> I mean, how much do you, are you, uh, what you call called, a Second Amendment fan if you're putting it on your dang boots? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen no cowboys do that nonsense. True. Yeah. All I right. know where Bayo stands, but I exactly. need to figure out where Spargo stands in this set, because going down in this situation here, you really want to close out against Nemo. You don't want to go a game five against any Bayonetta in the book, especially one of the best. Oh, look Yo, at that glitch. Oh, knew. my God. Oh, my goodness. Both players just sat there for a minute and literally looked at each other. It's like, wait a minute, he's going to jump, though. Yeah. And he is going to jump. <laughs> you have to. What else are you going to do? <laughs> that uh, is a rough, for sure. All right, so now Spargo bursting out of the corner with that dash attack. A crazy option again at low percentages. Typically, that's something that you save with the kills. Limit on deck yet again, and look at the stall by Lima. This is the perfect way to approach that. No need to interact with the character while they have that phenomenal option in the back pocket. Yeah, just don't mess with the limit. But okay, tech chase on the platform. This is huge. Gets the floor hit of the bat or of the up air, and that could be bad. Going for the down smash, trying to end it all. But instead, we're just going to reset. And what a match with Fargo. He knew that he didn't want to get forward thrown right there. Oh, chasing down with that little dash forward, too, on Lima. Again, just not committing to these options. Incredibly difficult. Now we get the side B. Lima in the corner. Spargo has an opportunity. These edge traps have been so sick. We get the forward air into the up air. Not quite going to finish it, but Lima all of a sudden on notice. Limit on deck two. This is a re-grab, J-Dog. Yeah, but Lima dodges the blade beam and still able to stay alive. Uses the ABK, doesn't get the second hit, but gets the wish time, and he gets a spike, and Spargo is going to go to game number five. Lima with a clutch of a lifetime on that one. What the heck did we just <laughs> see? Oh my lord. That was a small evolution of several interactions beforehand. I mean, we saw in games, uh, especially two and three, the double ABK. Spargo got hit with one, guy hit with the second because the um, one at the end has nearly fixed knockback. Like, you go next to nowhere. But then after that, Re Spargo recognizing that he did get hit with the full end hitbox, he had more leeway to DI away and try and beta back air because he could sense that Lima was cracking. But Lima knew that that was going to happen throughout that witch time and closed it out just like that. The thing, like, the witch time was already impressive, but also being able to finish in that situation, godlike. God, I, I, that is one of the craziest interactions of this bracket. And we are going to game five again. Lima has been playing since 10 a.m. We are almost like 11 hours into Lima's run, facing off against the number one or number two, excuse me, seed of the bracket in Spargo. This is like a storybook situation. You could not write a better script in this spot. Yeah, but he has to close it. You do not want to be the bridesmaid today. You want all of the, like, pop bonus that goes in this bracket. You want it all. You've been fighting here for, like, it's going to be 12 hours by the time it's done. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a difficult spot here. Already 97% on Lima, and then there is the limit. Cross slash certainly not going to heal center stage on a broader stage like Kalos, though. All right. So, but now the damage has already been done a fair bit. He's going to be doing... Just his best to not overextend, not get hit here. He just needs a single hit, has a perfect amount of rage, and clouds out a perfect percent for a big combo. And now stuck in the corner is Lima. I, I feel like Spargo's ledge trapping has been next level this whole set. Like, Lima's getting back to stage primarily for free, and you expect to do so, because are you really going to challenge Bayo out there? But Spargo just keeps you pinned to the corner. Yeah. And on top of that, too, now that we're in game five, Spargo's just walking away. The threat's been established. Lima now can just do something silly to try and get away from the perceived lead trap. 
Trying to go ahead and get a little bit of limit back, but a miss spacing. It looks like actually messed up the B reversal on that neutral B. Allowed him to get a good bit of damage, but not too much right here as Spargo gets the turn around right away. And again, retreating away from that forward air every time a player tries to swing. If you're grounded, usually Spargo's able to go ahead and dash away. Mm -hmm. But now it honestly looks like Lima's starting to fray a little bit at the edges, but you can never truly count this player out. I mean, when he makes plays like that, but he hits the tech, and since you're in witch time, you're going to be intangible for the vast majority of that. But that four, though, should certainly do it. Not no, quite. actually. Good yeah. God, that's eight. Oh! What a turnaround! Spargo, you could barely see the character models almost in the magnifier, and the man hits a button against Bayo in that situation? I genuinely think he timed it that way because he was in between the screen and the magnifier. You could not see the start up there. That is brave. That is stunningly brave. Set winningly brave. Yeah. And that just might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Lima on the board for this game. But Spargo, the damage might have already been done, man. You can just play for trades and come out ahead. But Lima might not be looking to trade. He might be looking for, yep, this situation right here. Spargo DIing away, able to get an up B. And with that data, recognizing that Lima wants to overextend. Now, I don't know if he has jump. The bench press is real, man. You're, You're overworking that lips. muscle. You're overworking that muscle. <laughs> Hit the legs, Cloud, please. All right, we actually the reverse up air it looks like as well. Cannot connect. Okay, okay. Again, Spargo messes up the B reverse, and I don't blame him in that spot because Lima had the opportunity to get the cross up with that back air. Yeah. Oh, using the guns again just to kind of keep Spargo locked down to the ground, but still that back air coming through. And I talked about trading before, but Spargo has been lapping in percent. Yeah, this, these ain't no trades. Spargo is in advantage the entire way. And now Lima trying to play a lot more grounded, dashing back and forth, daring Spargo to claim some space. So, you know what, back air, that'll work. Limit, but not even necessary. The back air will do it with a two-stock. Game five, after some amazing aggression off stage, Spargo secures that W against, potentially, the biggest upset of the tournament. Yeah, it was almost the story that almost was, but Lima's not out.